1815, Mount Tambora, Indonesia. Some 20 cubic miles of debris are launched sky high. Most fall back to Earth. But a cloud of ash circles the globe for several years, blocking the sun. 1816 is the year without a summer. In Europe and New England, snow falls in July. Crops fail, and 80,000 starve. It's the most powerful eruption in the last 10,000 years. By contrast, the 1980 explosion of Mount St. Helens was almost 80 times smaller. Yet it packed the punch of 500 atomic bombs. Magma contains gases that expand violently as they reach Earth's atmosphere. It's like pulling the cork on a bottle of champagne, the size of Mount Everest. A volcano need not explode to be deadly. Lava too thick to flow can ooze up slowly and form a teetering heap of hot rock. Collapse triggers a searing avalanche of pulverized rock, gas, and ash called a pyroclastic flow. At 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit and more than 100 miles an hour, it consumes nearly everything. The Caribbean town of St. Pierre prospers at the foot of a sleeping giant until May 8th when Mount Pelé unleashes a pyroclastic flow. In two minutes, 30,000 people are incinerated. One survives. Though badly burned, this prisoner was somehow protected by the thick walls of his cell. Elsewhere, the devastation is eerie. Pyroclastic flows are virtually unpredictable and relatively rare. Many volcanologists have seen them only in photographs. May 1991, southern Japan. Mount Unzen serves up an extravaganza, some 35 pyroclastic flows a day. The flows are small, but a village lies too close for comfort. Evacuations are ordered. From a safe distance, Villagers find the spectacle irresistible. No less captivated, journalists and volcanologists from around the globe flock to the scene. Among them, Maurice and Katja Kraft. In the volcano world, these are superstars. Here you have a pyroclastic flow, yeah. Mm -hmm. It don't occur all the time. When you have lava flow, then it will happen all the time. It's why this is so interesting, because you have very few. After more than two decades of filming eruptions, the crafts have a discriminating eye. Today, Unzen underwhelms. This is one of the smallest pyroclastic flow I have seen. I hope to see bigger ones than this one, because this is very small, really, yes. 
this is no idle bluster. Maurice and Katja Kraft have probably seen more eruptions at more volcanoes than anyone on Earth. Crafts hail from France, but home is wherever the earth breathes fire. For me, an active volcano, especially volcanoes that I know very well, those are like friends. There is a sort of dialogue between the volcano and me. I don't know exactly why. For me, the danger is not important. I am afraid when I go in a car. But on volcanoes, I forget everything. And there is no more danger for me. For the crafts, there has never been another calling. I fell in love with volcanoes when I was seven years old. I saw my first volcano with my father, Stromboli, in Italy. And this was really a discovery for me, to see a mountain, a sort of cone, and at the top to have fire, to have explosion every minute, was fantastic. And I have seen this eruption from very near, and I was really fascinated. So I decided to become geologist. I fell in love without seeing active volcanoes. I have seen films and photos and was uh, interested in geology. And so I decided to be volcanologist. And only two years later, I asked my parents to go to Italy to see really the volcano. And I was also impressed when I see for the first time what I wish to do. We met, in fact, at the university. I was in geology and Katya was in geochemistry. So I was crazy about volcanoes, she was crazy about volcanoes, and so we loved each other after. It's an after effect of loving volcanoes. When we went to Vulcano in Italy, we were a group of friends. We were students at this time in geology, in geochemistry and so on. So we stayed at the foot of the volcano when we were making a lot of research, but with a very low amount of money. And I remember that we don't had so much clothes at this time, but those gases are so acid that our clothes were completely burned with a lot of holes in it because of the gases. So after two or three days, we were looking really like beggars. From the start, the crafts photographed their fieldwork. Soon, Films and photos became their bread and butter. Through the lens, they would share their passion for volcanoes with the entire world. Iceland, 1973. The Isle of Heime was abandoned a single night. On this empty stage, the crafts stood spellbound. My work is different from other volcanologists because uh, when I see an eruption, sometimes it's so nice that I just drop my instruments and look. That is to say, I cannot only study the eruption. I want also to film volcanoes to show it to other people. So I am as much interested in aesthetic than in science. As was often the case, the crafts were the only foreign filmmakers on the scene. Katya and Maurice had no children, no academic appointments, nothing to tie them down. One year, they circled the globe eight times. Tanzania, 1988. They shot the first footage of lava flows at a unique volcano called Longai. 
I think really to see Long Eye from near is something that is outside the Earth. I have never seen such an unusual volcano than this one. And what is very peculiar for this volcano is that those lava are black. It's not mud, it's lava. And once you see those black lava flows going the here and there in this crater, 24 hours after emission, those black lava became white. We were very surprised by the fluidity of this lava and with this low temperature because it's only 500 degrees Celsius. And to take the samples, the fluid lava, with a spoon. And what was very exciting also, that in the night it was red, like other lava. 